Hello, welcome back to Statman Dave Clips. Today we're going to be answering the question, does Erling Haaland complete Solskjaer's Manchester United? If you are new around here, please hit that subscribe button, like the goddamn video. Anyway, let's dive in. Every time I watch Haaland, I think this guy is getting better. This guy is becoming more complete. This guy is seeing the game in a different way. Um, started off the season with a cheeky little hatty in the German Cup um, against Weiss, Weissbenden. Um, one penalty, two goals from open play, and then back to the Bundesliga, two goals, two assists. Arguably should have been three assists. Uh, stolen assist, or his assist got stolen for his pass to Gio Reyna. Um, but a superb display from Haaland through the middle. And arguably should have got the perfect 10 so for score. Come on, guys. Get the perfect 10. Uh, but today I think we're going to focus on uh, and talk about Erling Haaland. Uh, and does he complete Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United? Obviously with, uh, you know, looking at Lukaku has joined Chelsea. Kane could be joining City. Which opens up a bit of a market for Manchester United. You know, one of the big things with with European football, you know, players and acquisitions at this young age, you think if they maybe sign them now, you're going to get them for the next five years, which takes them out of the market for five years' time. Big, big signing. And obviously with City and Chelsea, obviously big spenders in the Premier League, you probably look at PSG as well as another big spending club that have just brought in the great Lionel Messi um, that's going to cost them a lot of wages and so forth. Do these clubs have enough cash or want for someone like uh, Erling Haaland, whose contract is... Uh, well, there's a clause in his contract, a transfer clause in his contract that is activated this summer, which opens up that idea that Manchester United might have a tap in. And we do look at Haaland and we do look at his level of performance um, and what he, what he, what he's done over the last few seasons. Last season, you'd probably say was Haaland's breakout in the Champions League, where people started to look around and think, "Wowza, this guy's doing at the top level of European football uh, with his ten goals and two assists in just eight games. Absolute phenomenal displays. Was brilliant against them." Um, Severe in both legs, a goal and an assist in the first one, um, and then grabbed a two goals, a brace in the second game. But I think the big thing with his performance uh, up against um, Frankfurt was just the, the development, in a sense. Again, the development. Last season, we spoke about his hold-up play was improving, his one-touch play was improving, which still he's working on. You know, still there's a few bad touches here and there. But I think the big thing from this match was his creativity and his... I think one big thing that, you know, you strike at Haaland is he's quite a greedy player, in a sense. Obviously, goal scorers and players that have that level of putting the ball in the back of the net usually are a little bit greedy. But if you look at the chances and the assists that Haaland created for his teammates, you're looking at a player that is getting that completeness from a creative sense. And, you know, we continue to tick things off about him becoming a complete forward. And one thing that we talk about Haaland is... He literally could become the greatest forward, greatest striker of all time. He is built like an absolute unit. He is so fast. His his ability to control a ball and dribble on the on you know with speed is incredible. He can finish off both feet. There isn't a hole really in his game, which is pretty incredible. From a tactical level, obviously, Borussia Dortmund um, under Marco Rose, um, you know they they do like to move the formation, be it a diamond, be it a four. Two, three, one. Be it a four, three, three. It will move round, but very much a, a four, two, three, one in the opening game. And I think the thing that we saw with with Haaland was his ability to link with his teammates, to Reina, to Thorgan Hazard, uh, to Marco Royce around him. Um, you know, when the ball's in his feet, when he's you know he's dribbling in the transition, when he's beaten a uh, you know a number of players, it's getting his head up and finding that pass that I thought was so so impressive uh, against Frankfurt. Uh, you know, laying the ball off on the left for, for Royce for an assist, laying the ball off the right, on the, the right for Hazard for an assist. Uh, I just thought it was very, very impressive for him. You know, we all know that, you know, he loves operating in the channels. He's brilliant getting into the channels, spinning in behind defences. The way that he cuts across players as well, I really like. He takes them out of the game. So, you know, sometimes when you're beating a man in the dribble, you know, the, the idea would be to, you know, you're going to continue that same, you know, vertical play in that same straight run. What I love about Haaland is when he's beaten a man, he comes back across the defender, just completely takes him out of the game uh, in that sense. And we saw that a few times. I think there was one uh, ball that he, you know, received wide left in the channel. 
created a really good chance for Azard to, to score a goal. He didn't do that. There was one in the second half where he got played through, um, or he played Royce through again. Uh, and Royce actually tried to play it back to him. He lost his bounds a little bit and fell over. Could have been another assist. But I think that awareness now that he's developing as a footballer is pretty incredible. Pretty incredible for such a, a young player that's kind of new. New to this, this goal scoring. So his game by numbers, absolutely sensational versus Sanchang Frankfurt. Uh, six shots, completed three out of his four dribbles. You know, something that's just ridiculous. For a player of that size and that speed to have that level of agility is crazy. Is absolutely crazy. Uh, created three chances, two big chances as well. Um... Just an all-round brilliant display. Won two out of his four aerial duels. You know, another thing that Dortmund are going to do under Marco Rose this season, they're going to be vertical. They're going to play into Haaland's feet. They're going to play to Haaland's head. And I think that will just improve him in that attribute, you know, receiving to feet, receiving with pressure behind him. And that will just complete him. You know, we know he can finish. We know that he can put the ball on the back of the net and so forth. The question is, will he score 30-plus goals in the Bundesliga this season? Started supremely well. Um, you know, two in one, I definitely believe that he's the type of player that now is at that point where he will score 30 plus goals in the Bundesliga and probably will end up with double figure assists as well. We look at Harry Kane's development over his time. He's finally got to that point where top assist, the top goal scorer in the Premier League last season. Haaland could very much do that in the Bundesliga this season. Which moves on to that that kind of question as, does he complete Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United? Is the path available to him? I think when we go back to analyse the, the, the clubs that, that could get him, you know, your top level European clubs, I think that's what his next move is. It's to a Bayern Munich, Juventus, um, Real, Barca, Man United, Liverpool, Spurs, uh, Liv Spurs, sorry, Liverpool, Chelsea, um, Man City. We mentioned previously the Premier League clubs. Um, you're looking at City, Carry Kane, Lukaku, Chelsea, Man United, it's open. Liverpool, you could argue, very, very open. And if Liverpool want to move their team on, signing Haaland would be an absolute masterstroke. You know, thinking Mane one wing, Haaland through the middle, Salah wide right, that makes a lot of sense. But do they have the cash is the question. They spent a lot of money over the last few seasons. Um, and can they keep spending at that rate? Not too sure. For a player that could be maybe 90 million euros. Apparently the release clause has kind of changed in a sense and it might be up to that kind of fee. Whereas, you know, Man United obviously spent this summer, probably can spend again next summer. We look at Juve, probably can't spend as well. Um, you know, they're probably still playing back, paying back Cristiano Ronaldo's fee and, and transfer club and so forth. Then we flip to a, you know, um, the Spanish clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid, pretty much in a, in a terrible position as much as Real want to get Haaland. Uh, do they have the cash? Probably not. Which does leave us open... Um, to Manchester United. It does leave us open to that that point as does it complete Solskjaer's side? And I think with United, the depth in attacking talent is pretty incredible already. Greenwood through the middle, Bruno off the, you know, as a number 10, Dan James wide right, Pogba wide left. Obviously throwing in a Jaden Sancho into that mix. Uh simple. Then you obviously throw in a Rashford maybe wide left. Uh, looking at Cavani through the middle, a Martial through the middle. But it, it does it hit the same as having a Haaland in that area. And having players like Bruno Fernandes near someone like Haaland, that is the level where Man United should be looking at because that is just such quality in that level. And when you look at midfield, obviously we've got a lot of rotation in midfield. Pogba can play in that deeper zone. Uh, Matic could come in. Donny van der Beek could come into that deep zone. The defence is probably on point. Keeper's probably on point. It probably is the last little bit with maybe a defensive midfielder and a Declan Rice esque um role in there but Haaland really becoming complete and you know you'd look at that front three in Rashford Sancho and Haaland supported or supplied by Bruno Fernandes crazy and that'd be the move that would really be the move um and Haaland's had a had a great season at Dortmund already he's looking like he's getting even better um, and wants to become complete and wants to become that complete guy so maybe it's time it's time to kind of move that uh, the strategy for Manchester United on that because he will be the best number nine in world football and could be the best one of the best number nines ever due to his physicality, his speed, his strength, his close control. It's all crazy for for such a young player uh, and superb athlete. Thanks for watching, guys. If you are new around here, please hit that sub button. Is Haaland the best striker in world football? Get in the comments below and let me know. I've been Statman Dave on Statman Dave Clips. See you later.